All right, guys, welcome to Game Changer Podcast. I'm David Villa here with Diana Villa. Today, we're going to talk about exponential potential, exponential potential, and um, exploring the theme of this, we're going to talk about how faith can unlock the exponential potential in our lives. We're going to look at uh, Philippians 4.13 as a scripture, scripture reference today. It says, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. And the first uh, topic kind of we're going to dive into on this exponential potential is unleashing faith and discussing the concept of faith and its transformative power. And, um, you know, starting by maybe sharing some stories, some testimonies of how, you know, we've experienced um, or maybe knowing someone who's experienced exponential growth through their faith. And I can think about, um, you know, in our life, 30 years of being married, Diana, many times, but in the area of finances, you know, um, looking at the fact of how the Lord built faith in our expectation for him to do mighty things in the area of finances and even believing God, you know, if we can look back, you know, today, some of the mountains and some of the things and challenges and, and, and that we face and some of the, um, you know, challenges we face, I can't imagine facing those things that we face today 30 years ago. But there was a time where even in, you know, looking at this unleashing faith that God developed our faith in the area, even of finances. And, um, you know, um, becoming a tither, you know, learning how to trust him and steward what he's given us. And just that's one example of how I think he stretched our faith, believing for our children, believing God went against all odds and things in our life, you know, where, you know, we watched, um, you know, situations occur. And we knew that without God intervening, you know, and then during those times, really kind of unleashing faith and really only having faith to stand on. And um, so, you know, those are just some personal things. I know you have a lot to add to that as well. But Hebrews 11, 1 says, you know, it's a very familiar scripture when it comes to faith. But now faith is confidence in what we hope for and assurance about what we do not see. So by definition, faith is something that we don't see, but it's something that we hope for. So we take what we hope for and we continue hoping for it and believing for it, even though we don't see it. We walk by faith, not by sight. And so unleashing faith is, uh, I think, is, very, is, is a first key to exponential potential, right? Because we have this potential in us, and it's, it's exponential. It doesn't just multiply or add, but it, but, it, but it grows exponentially. And that's the way faith grows, right? The faith the size of a mustard seed can move a mountain if we only believe. When, you, when it comes to that and unleashing faith, what comes to your mind and maybe even some personal, you know, stories over the years and things that you've had to believe God for with regards to, you know, your life? Anything come to so mind? I think for me personally, I think God um, equipped me and, and gave me growth in even just parenting. Um, when we had our first daughter, I was 18 years old. Um, I had just barely left home. Um, I really didn't have a whole concept of responsibility and bills and, and things of that nature. And so I think God, um, you know, I grew up sometimes I feel like with our older two, Alexis and Austin, I feel like I grew up, but I think God knew my heart and I wanted to be the best mom possible. And I wanted to raise my kids in a home that loved God. And so I think because God knew my heart, even though I tripped and stumbled uh, many times, um, I think he gave me growth in that. Um, I think another area is um, I never went to college, and yet God equipped me and gave me the ability to see finances in a different way um, and be able to manage. It started out with just being able to manage a checkbook mm -hmm. and then eventually being able to forecast and look and budget and plan and, and things of that nature. And I think that's something God, because he knew my giftings. Uh, math was always something that was very easy to me growing up. I Not liked me. math. Um, <laughs> I like addition and multiplication. But, yes, but I do believe God equipped me and helped me in those areas that I think beyond even where my education. Um, and it's also, I think, always keeping a mindset that you've never arrived. You're constantly growing. Um, I watch little clips on um, X parts of Excel or budgeting or forecasting or um, things of that nature. So I'm constantly, even still now, trying to grow in certain areas. And I think... Um, the Lord's helped me. I mean, that's where I feel like for me personally in my personal life, growing, I wasn't raised in a Christian home, but growing my faith. Um, and even though um, I didn't always understand, helping me to trust God even in the unknown, mm -hmm. I think God's helped me in that area. 
um, I think one of the things for um, growth is in, in having faith is you have to know what you're believing and having faith for. I think that we often start um, our day, our, our year, our month, uh, life, marriage, parenting, um, without a plan, without really knowing what, what exactly am I believing for. And so I think that's another thing you have to know if you don't have a target or an aim, how are you going to grow in that area? So I think that's really important. Um, and those are just some really simple things. You know, during this, our, our church is going through a corporate fast, and one of the scriptures, and it started when, and I think I might have mentioned it in a previous podcast, but when our, our newest granddaughter was born, um, you know, that it says that man has a plan, and God, but God establishes, and I'm, not, I'm misquoting that. I'm going gonna, I'm, I'm gonna to memorize that verse. It's in Proverbs, and I'm gonna, I'll, I'll actually probably repeat it in a few minutes while we're, we're talking, but, you know, I need to have a plan. And I need to have a plan for my day. I need to have a plan for my morning. I need to have a plan for my afternoon. Um, and if I have a plan, that doesn't mean it's going to go exactly the way I anticipate or want because we got we got to also trust God that even if it doesn't go the way I plan, that I'm going to trust God that he's going to establish my path. He's going to establish the work of my hands. He's going to bring, you know, he's going to be that firm foundation. I'm going to trust him even if it doesn't go the way I plan. Mm. <clears throat> That's good. Um, so, so second point here in, with regard to exponential potential is overcoming limiting beliefs. And, you know, you touched on this a little bit, but I think faith helps in overcoming self-imposed limitations and, and societal expectations. And, you know, looking back, even over our life, there were things because of the way we were raised. You mentioned that a little bit. Um, but you know, we had self-imposed limitations, right? There were, or there were limitations through society or limitations through, well, you know, you're too young or you aren't experienced enough, or you can never make this happen, or you can't do it. Or that dream you have, you know, is, 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 that's just, that's just, that's just pipe dream. And, you know, faith helps overcome the self-imposed limitations or the limitations that society puts onto you, or even the expectations that society puts out there. And so, you know, looking at the biblical examples of individuals who defied odds through faith, I mean, the Bible's chock full of people who defied odds. And I'm thinking of David, you know, where um, it was against all odds that he would beat Goliath. You know, he was, he had self-imposed limitations, but he also had limitations of everyone around him. Um, you know, looking at, um, you know, Joshua going into battle, you know, um, the day that he asked God to st- to hold the sun steel still, you know, he was, um, you know, there were limitations around him, Jonathan and his armor bearer. There were two men against, you know, an army Gideon, you know, were the original 300 soldiers where God called the soldiers down to 300 and then, you know, overwhelmingly won the battle. And I can just go on and on where, you know, individuals in the Bible defied odds through their faith. And Luke one. Uh, three, 137 says, for nothing will be impossible with God. So I think it's important that, you know, faith, we recognize faith in its way to overcome limiting beliefs. You know, there's, there's beliefs that we have that limit us, but then faith is really unlimited. And I think that that played a big part as well, looking back into our lives. You know, we were, if we would subscribe to the, to the limited beliefs, you know, for every aspect of what we've gone through, I think that we would have fallen short. We would have failed. We would have given up. I think that really has to do with also um, finding the counterpart of what we believe versus what God says. Mm -hmm. So we believe that, you know, I'm not good enough, but he says I am, right? So I think it's also always knowing we know our weak points and we know our area of struggle and finding that counterpart of declaring what the word of God says about that area. That scripture in Proverbs, it was Proverbs 19.21, many are the plans in the mind of a man, but it is the purpose of the Lord that will stand. I'm sorry, that was another one. And I thought that was really good because it's like the purpose of the Lord will stand. The first one that I was actually referencing, I'm sorry, Proverbs 16, 9, the heart of man plans his way, but the Lord establishes what his steps. Mm. We have to, faith without works is dead. And so we have to take the step and he's going to establish our steps. And we may plan to go right, but as we begin to allow him to establish our steps, he may cause us to go left. So I I think that um, trusting God in our insecurities is a really big, big, like, 
like pivotal thing in mm. faith is yeah. like we have to trust him in our insecurities and we have to say hey i have doubt but god says that i can have faith um you know if i would have listened to statistics I, i've said this as part of my testimony i believe that based on how we got started out i you know we got married i was 17 years old i was uh, pregnant i hadn't finished high school there were so many odds against us that statistically we should be in a totally different place. And, you know, as I um, thought about that and the Lord really showed me one time, and I was just praying, like really just praying, like, Lord, I just don't really know why you've been so good to me because I don't deserve what yeah. I have. And the Lord put this little quote in my heart. I mean, I say he spoke to me, but he spoke to my heart. I didn't hear him audibly. I would love to hear the Lord audibly, but it's mostly that still small voice. And he said, the world called you a statistic, but I have called you an exception. Mm. And the God, God has called you an exception. Nothing is impossible with God, but we do have to still make sure that our plans line up with God's purpose in our life. Mm, that's good. And it brings me to point three, faith in action. Um, you know, faith faith by definition is action, right? The substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. And the Bible says faith without works is dead. And so, you know, let's look at the practical aspects of applying faith in our everyday life. And so, you know, it's, it's impossible to be a child of God, to go through life, and to really do it God's way without applying faith in our everyday life. And so I think it's important to discuss the role of faith in decision-making, right? Goal-setting and perseverance. So, you know, they'll tell you, hey, you have to have a goal. The top 3% in the world have their goals, write them down. And I think it's very important, but also, you know, what helps us uh, accomplish those goals, there's, there's, is, is there are two things. Number one, decision-making, right? We make um, right decisions and wrong decisions, and we, that, that's up to us. You know, we have to have this goal set up and, you know, A, does that goal line up with God, right? You said that a man's, you know, man has plans, but God will establish his steps. Another scripture we talked about in the last podcast was, I think it's Proverbs 16 as well. It says that commit your work unto the Lord and he'll establish your plans. So you just, your job is to work. Your job is to have, to have faith in action, and but trust God that he'll establish his plan. So number one, does your goals line up with God's? But let's just say you have some God goals and you put those down. Well, then there's decision making that takes place. And those decisions, there's a right decision and a wrong decision. And I think that multiple times throughout a day, if you wait until a week to make a decision or a month or a year, you know, you're going to miss out on the daily decisions and sometimes the hour by hour decisions that you need to make the right or wrong decisions. So number one, decision making is a big thing when it comes to goal setting. Also perseverance, you know, but then the world gets these things right, but they, but they separate them out from faith. So they'll say it's hard to beat someone that doesn't quit. So there's perseverance in action, but is it lined up with God's goals? And are you making the right type of godly decisions? And so the scripture that comes to mind is James 1.22, be doers of the word, not hearers only, deceiving yourself. So if you hear the word of God and you don't do it or commit it to action, then you're just deceiving yourself, right? You're just, you're just going through the motions. And I think that's very important when it comes to setting goals, right? Making decisions and persevering, well, which is I don't is think it's enough to make goals. <clears throat> I right. think it's, it's got to go beyond that. You have to have the goals, but what do you have in place to make sure that you're working towards those goals? Um, if you have made a decision, okay, I'm going to um, eat healthy, and yet I have not put any carrots or celery or vegetables in my refrigerator, and I <laughs> still only have ice cream and candy, most likely that's that goal of eating healthy isn't going to happen because it's not enough to set a goal. You've got to have, you know, steps in between to achieve the goals. And I think that's where we fall short. If we dream big and then we don't put things in place to make sure that we have the resources or the things at hand to get to that goal. And then we end up discouraged. Um, you know, I, I was in a, a women's um, chamber of commerce meeting last week, and um, and I can't remember the person's name, but they were talking about, you know, what do you do to to get things like make sure that you're meeting those goals. And it was a it was about a, a Broadway. I think it was she was a Broadway dancer or something like that. And one of the things that she um, exercised and danced 365 days a year. The only days that she didn't do that is if she was sick or there was something that specific that would prevent her from doing like rehearsing that day. And so they said, well, what do you do to make sure that you set that time um, aside for that to, to practice? And they said, 
she said, I lay out, and, the, and I'm re- reciting, um, and I want a researcher, I, I'm reciting something someone mentioned, but it is, I do this in some ways, but they said, I lay out my clothes so that when I get up, the first thing I see are those clothes that make me go to the gym. And so I would say, if you have a goal, what are you putting in place to make sure, you know, for me, um, I had my, I had, I have to take a medication um, daily, and if I don't put it on my nightstand, so it's the first thing I see when I turn off my alarm and I see that medicine, nine times out of ten, I will forget to take it. You know, my lunch, I pre-pant plan, and we usually have it in the refrigerator and like little things. I have it there, so when I open up the refrigerator and I really want a candy bar, there's my lunch. Right. What are you putting in place? And you know, I. If I want to go to the gym that day, a good thing for me to do is I can't wait till the morning to pack my gym bag. Yeah. If I'm going to pack my gym bag, I have to have it really the night before and I have to have it near my purse. Why? Because it's I have to make a conscious decision. Yeah, no, I'm not going to take that. But in the morning, I could get too busy and not have enough time to pack it. So I, where, how do you get to your goals? Preparation is the key. Making sure that you prepare the night before or, you know, before lunch, whatever it is you're trying to achieve, are you preparing? Are you putting in things in place to remind you of what you've committed to? It's your faith in action. And and so the next point is multiplying impact. So this is what it's all about, right? This is getting into the the fruit of it. But we have to examine how faith can lead to exponential impact on communities and society. And that's really what it's all about, right? God's gifted you and I, and he's placed this whole thing. You go, well, what's the whole deal? What's it all for? Is it just so I can get to heaven? No, you, you accept Jesus as your Savior, then you're saved and you're on your way to heaven. It's about taking others with you. It's about impacting people around you. And so, you know, when I think about that, I think about individuals, organizations who, you know, whose faith-led acti- initiatives, you know, bring widespread spread positive change. And if you look at them, they are operating in these 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 principles. They're operating in faith and action. They're overcoming the limiting beliefs and they're unleashing faith. And the scripture reference that goes with this, John 14, 12, truly I say to you, whoever believes in me will also do the works that I do and greater works than these will he do. That's, that's the words of Jesus himself. And what he was saying there is not that you and I are greater than Jesus, right? We're not supposed to take the place of, of Jesus, but he said, greater things will we do. And that's because he went to the father and Jesus was limited to a geographical area when he was here on earth. And when he descended into heaven, uh, you know, he gave the Holy spirit so that we could all operate on a universal level. And, and, and so, you know, but it's all about making that multiplied impact. And that's the, the, the fruit of this. Why do we need to grab this? Why, why do we need to unleash our faith? Why do we need to overcome the limiting beliefs? Why do we need to put our faith in action? Because this is about exponential potential. God's placed potential on the inside of you, and that potential is nothing unless it's unlocked and developed. And really, when it comes to a God type of potential, it's it's exponentially unlocked. It's exponentially grown. And that's what God wants to do. He wants to take what's in you if it's if it's the God of the universe that lives in you, he's a big God, and he wants to exponentially use you. He wants to bring something mighty out of you. And I think that that's the key that we need to, why do I need to do this? Why do I need to get better? Why does God constantly work on me? It's because he wants you to impact the world around you. Whatever your sphere of influence is, whatever it is that you do, whatever it is that you feel like is not enough, whatever you feel like has been discounted, God has placed a a burden on you for that and for such a time as this. And I believe that every person that's listening right now has exponential potential on the inside of them that the enemy wants to keep dampered down and God wants to unlock on the inside. I think that comes down to constant relationship <clears throat> with the Lord and communication. And how do you have a relationship and communication? You have to spend time with him. And you have to know what his word says. And you have to know what the Holy Spirit is speaking to you. Um, and you have to surround yourself um, with people and things that are going to spur you on when you feel like you can't do it within your own strength. It's greater is he that is in you. And um, I think the more you spend time and the more you devote um, your thoughts to the ways of the Lord, the word of the Lord, the things of the Lord, it allows you to be able to walk out those things that in the beginning you might not have thought you could do. Here's the facts. Peter walked on water, and he walked where natural men sink. 
but it was when he began to take his eyes off of Jesus and focus on what was around him that he began to sink. Mm -hmm. And so um, I heard a story um, or someone speak on that message uh, a few months back. And one of the things I never really thought about is that the Lord brought him back to community, back to the boat of community, his, his, uh, his, his other, the other disciples. I mean, the Lord could have just picked him up and kept, kept him moving on, walking across, right? But he brought him back to the boat in community. And so I feel like that's really important too. Not only do you have to have um, constant communication and relationship with the Lord, but you have to have constant communication relationship with the people that God's placed in your life around you. And brings us to our last point here, sustaining exponential growth. How do you sustain exponential growth? So let's say you unleash your faith, you overcome the limiting beliefs, you commit and buy into faith and action. You understand it's for the purpose of multiplying impact. So now sustaining exponential growth. And so how do we maintain and nurture exponential growth in faith? And so, you know, let's look at the role in prayer. You know, you mentioned just now community, you know, which is fellowship, right? And continual learning and sustaining faith-driven momentum. So I think that constantly, you know, making sure that we're committing ourselves to prayer, to fasting, to church, to Bible study, to reading, um, to community, and to growing. And the scripture reference that comes to mind here is 2 Peter 3.18, but grow in the grace and knowledge of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. And so it's important that we we don't just get these things and start running the race and not understand the importance of, you know, sustaining this exponential growth. And that's a, that comes from a solid foundation and keeping yourself locked into the basics. And these things, they might be basics only because that they, they're, they're around at the beginning, but they're something that is equally as important at the end of your journey as they are at the beginning of your journey. And that is continually praying, making sure that you're, you know, connected to God through fasting, you know, connected to God through community and church and fellowship and continually learning um, how, how to sustain that faith driven momentum. And I think it's key. And you talked about it with going back to community and tying into the, to the church. And well, I think one thing you said in that is <clears throat> you have to run your race. Mm -hmm. You have to know what you're racing and you need to run your race. It's very easy. I think in, in culture and just so much out there, social media is to, um, want to run somebody else's race. But I think staying in community, staying within, um, your own relationship with the Lord, that he will direct and establish your steps and ru to run your race and extend grace. I think that's a really big thing. Even before we got to this part of it, I was thinking the word grace just kept coming in my mind. Extending yourself grace mm -hmm. and then extending others. Um, in our Make It Happen yesterday, a corporate um, gathering of our all of our employees, someone talked about not having grace. Like he was talking about, um, you know, when people were struggling about finding employment and leaving a job. He's like, I always had a job. I didn't understand. I, I realized that I was harder on those people because I've never experienced that until I experienced that I was on the, on the look for a job. And so extending grace, I think we have to, first of all, extend our self grace because sometimes we beat our, we're our worst critic and our worst enemy. Yeah. Um, but then we also have to be able to extend grace. And what is that for? That's so you can share with somebody else like, hey, I've been there. I've experienced that. I came through the other side. And, and this is, um, you know, God proved, proved faithful to me in this area. Um, and so I think that's really, grace is really important because I feel like we don't always do that, especially now we're just, we, we can be so isolated. We almost become hard. And I, I was sharing with someone um, a couple of days ago, we were just talking about, you know, sometimes the biggest thing that the enemy uses against us is isolation. And I think when we isolate mm -hmm. from the people of God, the things of God, the word of God, the spirit of God, what happens is we become harder and we extend less grace. Yeah. hundred percent. So I want to encourage you to embrace faith for exponential growth and impact. And, you know, I want to invite you at this time too, those listening, um, and watching on YouTube, you know, to um, share your own experiences and testimonies. Maybe you have something that you can put into the comments that would encourage someone else. Maybe you have an example of how, you know, you have had to embrace faith or maybe where you felt like you lost your faith and, you know, grace came in. Or maybe you have an example where, you know, you've had to unleash your faith or overcome limiting beliefs. And this is a great time for you to place that in the comments. We'd love to hear that. And I'm sure it will be a blessing to someone else watching. And I'm going to ask you, Diana, just to close this out and in a, in a word of prayer, just for exponential potential that God would unlock it and that we would um, just see these things that we're believing God for come to fruition. As you were saying that, <clears throat> I just want to say that in my heart, I really believed um, that there are seasons where we go in and we have to rip down 
um, things that would have already been built mm -hmm. that seemed in that season the right way. And sometimes we're in this um, going back down to basics and foundations. And it's like, gosh, am I really back here again? Yes, you are. But this is the purpose of it so that you can rebuild stronger. Sometimes it's not till we strip some of those things off that we recognize how shaky some of our beliefs were. Right. And so I feel like right now that there's someone that could be listening that just saying, I feel like I've already done this. And I feel like I've already, you know, built all the rooms in my house. And I feel like I'm having to start back down to the foundation. That's okay. Yeah. It is okay. But the purpose, know that the purpose is to dig deeper, to get to the root of it, and come back stronger. So, Father, we thank you that you give us the ability, God, to recognize those things in our lives. I just pray for each and every person listening, God, that you would just, Lord, reveal to them their full potential, God. Lord, man looks at an outward appearance, but you look at the heart. And so, Father, I just pray that, Lord, as we come before you, that you would just reveal those things to us, God, those things in our heart that you're wanting, God, to purify and cleanse and help. I just pray that everyone listening, God, would just see their God-given potential, Father God, and that you would just um, help them, God, recognize that, or they just need to take the first step, the second <clears throat> step, God, and that you are the one that will establish it, Father. So I thank you right now, God. Help us to dream big, Father God, but also put things in place to achieve those things. Lord, let our hearts be one that is knitted to yours, God, and that we would seek you first in your kingdom, God, and all those other things would be added, Father God, that we would not look to the left or the right, but we would stay focused on you and your plan and your purpose over our lives. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Hey, that was another episode of Game Changer Podcast. Uh, make sure you download our Game Changer app. You can look at, uh, go anywhere where apps are and download it, Game Changer by IPD Agency. Also, um, if you are watching us on YouTube, spot, listening to us on Spotify or Apple, make sure you subscribe. If you're on YouTube, click the bell for notifications and make sure you comment, like, and share. Also, if you're on social media, tag us. We'd love to see what God's doing in your life. We look forward to seeing you the next episode of Game Changer Podcast. Until then, have a great day.